Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. I want to thank our colleague, Supervisor Ross Mercurimi, for being here as well, a good friend and ally and champion of civil rights for everyone around the world. Ooh. It is important that we get together. And I think what binds us all, our point in common, aside from or beyond any sexual orientation or gender identity or civil rights commitment is that we all at some point have shared that experience of being different and being picked on as a result of it or being physically smaller than or somehow standing out when we were young and isn't it interesting that that horrible challenging hurtful sometimes thought-provoking of suicide experience stays with us for a life but certainly can give us a strength and an understanding of how others keep talking I will I will thank you all right I don't even know what he was saying I, not unlike Tom, Tom in the Assembly, and I in the Senate, we each adjourned in memory of not only these nine young people who took their lives very recently, but all of the hundreds who unfortunately, on an ongoing basis, are doing this. This is a strange occurrence where so many happen in one week, but beyond our attention, this is happening on a regular basis. And so, I adjourn specifically in memory of Seth Walsh, 13-year-old boy from Tehachapi, California, who hung himself in his mother's backyard on a tree and then was rushed to the hospital and lingered for about a week until he died the last few days of September. Loving family, his mother had beautiful things to say about him. His, he was 13, his 11-year-old brother, also said what a great big brother he had and that he wasn't a fighter and his brother wasn't a fighter but his brother stood up for him and I tried to get my colleagues in the Senate's attention after I mentioned that Seth had been bullied for years because of perceived sexual orientation when he was eight nine ten years old and he did the very bold and courageous thing that at age 12 he came out to his schoolmates but that the bullying continued and led then to his tragic death and I said let's colleagues use this as an opportunity to stop and ask ourselves am I contributing to this hateful atmosphere? Is there anything I might have said, referring to my colleagues, but speaking in the first person, is there anything that I might have said that could have led a young person to think that he or she was not of value? Was there anything I might have done, any act I could have committed, any vote that I might have cast that might have communicated to a young person that they were less than or they were less deserving or that they should think little of themselves. And there was a silence in the room. I hope I just got maybe them to think for a little bit that children do listen and children are watching. And so when you cast a vote against marriage equality, you're making a statement that kids are hearing. And when you vote against just a few years ago, hospital visitation rights, you know, whatever the issue of the day is, they're against it. Looking back, it looks so ridiculous. You voted against hospital visitation rights? What were you thinking? So we get to raise some consciousness, but I also, I'm gonna end on a higher note here, this wonderful community spontaneous reaction to all of this, the beauty that comes from this, because we wanna prevent this. We may not stop it in its tracks, but we can prevent this and if we save one life, we've done something. And that we've had this genius idea from Dan Savage to communicate through the immediacy of the internet. It gets better. It gets 
better. It so gets better. And think back when you were 10 or 12 or 14, and if there had been such a thing as an internet, and if there had been a viral communication like it gets better, that you could have been anywhere in this country or around the world as isolated as you could be, frightened about who you were and the message you were getting from your family, from your teachers, from your church or synagogue, and there on the internet, a whole community was telling you, hang on, it gets better. And you knew that you weren't alone, and even more importantly, you knew people cared about you. Imagine that feeling, the strength of that feeling. So thank you, Dan Savage, and thank you, Matt Baum, who did that beautiful piece here in San Francisco. And we all should be doing it. I told it about this to my lesbian sister in San Diego and she said could I make a video and put it up? Said, yes you can! <laughs> we all can and so we can spread this. It's a, an amazing thing. So thank you for being here. We've got strength in this community. We've got wisdom in this community. It's our task, our joy, our responsibility, our opportunity to share it with the next generation so they know that they are loved and embraced. Harvey would love to know that we can give them hope through videos and through communications and just for being out and for being who we are. He couldn't have asked any more of us. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for affirmation and for David and for Robert for bringing this to San Francisco Civic Center. Thank you. So I, I haven't really thought about my school years uh, in a long time. And I've definitely never written anything down about it. Um, but I thought this was a good time to, to do it, to share just a little bit. Um, since we are sharing, I can't even see anybody out there, but We're here. We're yeah, I hear you. So I'm gonna just go ahead and share a little bit and then and tell you a little bit about my life. Um, when I was in second grade, I was picked on because I was short and smaller than the rest of the boys in my class. When I was in third grade, I was made fun of for writing like a girl, for writing, for my penmanship. When I was in fourth grade, I was put into a special class because I had good grades, yet I was made fun of. When I was in fifth grade, I was thrown on the floor of a school bus by two sixth graders who ripped off my pants, took my wallet, and called me a faggot. In junior high, it kept going. I was called queer, homo, fag, gay boy, Tons of other names. These were by kids in my school, classmates, teammates, coaches, teachers. High school for me became unbearable. I was keeping everything inside, lying to myself. I figured since no one was helping or stopping these people, there must be something wrong with me. Maybe I was all these things. Maybe I was bad. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was a mistake. Maybe I really was a fag. During my junior high school, I tried to end my life. I failed. No one knew, not my family, not my friends, no one at school. I kept it quiet, along with the truth of who I was. These are the memories I have of my childhood. And unfortunately, these stories are very common for many gay youth. And sometimes the story doesn't end like mine or maybe yours. Some are not as lucky to fail or survive as we have seen in the past few weeks across our country. And these are, the, these are the ones that we know of. This is not new news. It is just that it's finally being highlighted and reported by the media. We have a national epidemic and a need for a long overdue conversation. Bullying and suicide must stop. Today, suicide is the third leading cause of all young people ages 15 to 24. LGBTQ youth are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their straight peers. If they happen to come from a family that rejects them, 
They are nine times more likely. As adults, we can help these kids survive. Not just gay kids, but all kids, gay or straight. As friends, family, loved ones, you can listen, you can accept, you can support, you can respond, you can intervene. You can empower yourself to empower others. To the kids out there, you are perfect as you are. You are unique. You are unique and that is good. If someone calls you names or pushes you around, use your voice. Tell someone you trust. Keep telling people until someone listens. If you see a friend or a classmate getting bullied, you have to tell someone. It is not a bad thing to help someone who is hurting. One organization that is blazing trails with its mission to help stop youth suicide, and one which I'm lucky and proud to be a part of, is the Trevor Project. It really is awesome. The Trevor Project is the national organization focused on crisis intervention, crisis intervention and suicide prevention among lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth. It's about saving lives, building community, and changing society. To speak further about the Trevor Project, I'm honored to introduce one of our extremely dedicated board members, who is a seventh generation heterosexual Mormon, mother of two, who loves, <laughs> who loves Trevor and insists that you do too. Please welcome Bonnie Graves. It's people like Mike that make me incredibly honored uh, to have an opportunity to stand up here today. I am uh, many things. I am a seventh generation Mormon heterosexual mother. So why do I care about things like this? I care because we should all care. And I think, I think one of the real challenges and yet opportunities that we have in these moments of crisis is how we choose to unite in how we choose to involve uh, each other in what is essentially a universal and a, and a national, if not international, epidemic that's occurring with our young people. It's enough. Something that I have repeated to myself time and time again in recent years um, prior to joining the Trevor Project particularly is no more not on our watch. Not one more not a single additional life lost to this senseless, senseless hatred. Not a single one more. Not on our watch. Let's be certain that we're watching, to Mike's point, that we're vigilant, that we're aware of the young people in our lives wherever we may intersect with them. Uh, Mike mentioned the Trevor Project. He's one of our fantastic ambassadors here in San Francisco. Uh, it's my great privilege to sit on the board of directors for uh, the Trevor Project. It's an amazing organization. We still run the only 24-7 uh, crisis hotline for gay and questioning kids. These phone calls would break your heart, but at least there is always someone there at the other end of the phone line to answer the phone. Uh, it's an organization I'm very proud to be a part of. We're doing a lot of work with the school systems, uh, both here in San Francisco, San Diego, D.C., Chicago, Miami. You name it, the need is there. Um, again, I, I come from a Mormon background myself. I was born and raised in Salt Lake City. Uh, actually uh, raised on the East Coast but have lots of relatives there so I'm particularly proud to be associated with Affirmation because I think they're a wonderful group of people who are showing that there can be leadership in all places and that true compassion and I'll go ahead and say it true Christianity if that's your faith if that's your choice true Christianity comes from a place of compassion for all people and with that in mind it's it's, it's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who's somebody I know quite well because she happens to be my mother, Lynette Graves. Uh, my mom and dad are amazing people, and I say that not just because they're my folks, but because they in many ways have been uh, role models and trailblazers for others in the community. Uh, my mother served on the PFLAG board for some time, and uh, she's here to speak tonight a little bit what it means to be a parent of a gay kid who may be at risk. So my mother, Lana Graves. Woo! 